Today is June the 15th, 2009. My name is Tanya Fincham, and I'm today, here today with Don Wingo. Wingo. Wingo of, I guess, Yale, Oklahoma, or That's Mary my Mac. address, yeah. Okay. okay. And this, we're doing an oral history project for the Centennial Farm Families of Oklahoma, and it's for the OSU Library. All right. All right. So my first question is to ask you how your family came to own this land. Well, I guess in 1907, the, the Wingo, Grandpa Wingo bought it. But the, the, the two, two sons, John and George, they, well, they, they, they bought it, but Grandma Wing, and Grandpa Wingo went their mortgage. They had loaned them the money, I guess, to pay for it. And, and so I guess they started living on it but, and raising crops. And, and how, many, how many acres did and, they own? And it was 100, 160. 100. It was originally an Indian land, but they had one more white family that had it before they bought it and, and so my dad and Uncle George came here in 1908 and the, the, they bought no buildings and they lived in a tent the first year until they could get a house built. And they, they came from where? From Skeedy, up at Skeedy, Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They, they originally came from Kansas. Well, they started out in Kentucky and, and then moved to Kansas. That's where most of the kids had born, all except the oldest one, Aunt Kitty, was born in Kentucky. And then. Uh, that, that, and Uncle John and they, they, they divided the land and Uncle John taking the North 80 and Dad took the South 80. Okay. And, and they built the house, the first house in 19 and probably about 19 and 9, I guess. Dad and my mother were married. Was married January the tenth, nineteen and ten. Jan January the twelfth. January the twelfth, nineteen and ten. And then they lived on this. Yeah, they lived right over there across the road. There's a here on photo of the land, of the property. Okay. Had a nice pond. Had a pond? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. So what did they farm on their part? Well, it was first started out in the early days with cotton. Cotton? That was the first cash crop they had that made any money, but it wasn't much money in anything else. And they raised cotton. That's what they, how they paid the finished men for the land, raising cotton. <clears throat> he finally, after in 1916, they finally paid the mortgage off, and they bought it in 1908. So they was eight years of getting it paid for. That's pretty good, though. Yeah. <laughs> and how many children did they have? Uh, yeah, just Ruby, my sister, and the mayor's only two. Just two of you, okay. Ruby and Don. Okay. And then where, where would they take their cotton to sell it? Oh, I think they had one at Merrimack then. Oh, the cotton a, gin. A cotton gin? Yeah, they had all, these, all these towns around probably had cotton gin. Cause they, they raised lots of cotton, cotton all over the country. That was their main case crop for everybody. There wasn't no money in cattle or, yeah. or any chickens or raising eggs or anything. Well, I guess they've taken the eggs and 
the chickens to town on Saturday and the cream, and that's what they sold out to get the groceries to come home with. Did they do that in Merrimack or Yale? Yeah, they, I think started out Merrimack was a pretty good town way back in 1920. Till, 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 oh, it was not too bad a town after World War II was over with. And that's where they shopped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they started going to Yale. I guess they were going to Yale mostly uh, right uh, during the war, I guess, World War II. <clears throat> and so when were you born? Oh, on December the 15th, 1915. On the farm? Yeah, right in that old house. In that house. That okay. same house over there. Okay. And my sister was born on August the 4th, 1912. That's the same house. So did you have to help pick cotton? Yeah, I picked some cotton. I <laughs> had a great lot, but I did, yeah. yeah. And then when they switched from cotton, what did they do? Well, they raised corn and kaffir corn, stuff like that, feed the chickens, you know. And the corn, they fed it to the hogs, they usually had raised some hogs they butchered for meat and they needed to have something to sell. Same way as chickens, they raised them for the eggs and, and they had something to eat. In the summertime, the young chickens would come on, they had, started eating fried chicken all about all summer. <laughs> <laughs> so what were some of your chores as a child? Well, I, I helped with the milking milk the cows. Probably I wasn't over six or eight years old when I was milking cows. They the same as so many old gentle cows or maybe to, that they couldn't have handled very good themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they'd, they'd take the wild ones, I guess, and let me strip the little ones that were more gentle. <laughs> And where did you go to school? Um, Merrimack. Got right up the road here, about three and a half miles northeast of here. That's, yeah. And how would you get there? Oh, when I first started out, they had the old wagon and school bus was drove with horses. Really? Horses, yeah. And then I finally at the finally got to an old truck and they'd build a bed on the old truck and made a school bus out of it and haul the kids with that old truck. And that, that was the early days, early days going to school. School. Well, how many children would be in your in the school? Oh, I was in the class. Mm -hmm. I'm probably not over a dozen, dozen or fifteen maybe. But well, did your mother have a garden? Oh yeah, yeah. They always raised a nice garden, and they had some fruit trees. What kind of fruit? Well, mostly peaches. I think. Yeah, I don't remember them having apples or peaches, mostly. And they grew okay in Oklahoma. Pardon? And they grew okay in Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Did you have a cellar? Oh, yes, uh huh, yeah. Back then, they kept the butter and the cream and the eggs down in the cellar. It was my job to, whenever they got ready to go to town, I have to go down in the cellar and you get a case of eggs and bring them up, but put them in the car or whatever they were driving and <laughs> help load it up. And you have to get down in it sometime with the weather? <clears throat> Well, we wasn't too much about going to the cellar. I remember one time we did, one or two times, it got got pretty windy in the buckets and one thing and another started blowing across the yard and the tubs turning over. <laughs> so we kind of got scared and we went to the cellar. But I, but outside of that, we never had to, had to get pretty scary before we did. 
didn't lose any property, buildings or anything? From no, storm? no, we don't. I don't remember ever having any damage from storms. That's good. I was pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. So on the original place, how many barns did they have? Probably in the early days, they just probably had one. And then later on? Yeah, later on. I can show you on that picture there. Yeah, we'll we'll look at it in just a minute. So, what does the farm do today? Oh, uh, it's just pasture and cattle. Cattle. Just raise hay and sell hay and uh, have the hay to feed the cattle in the winter time. That's about all we're doing, just hay and cattle. Okay. Now there. Well, when you were a child, what did you do for fun? Oh. Uh, we had a hole down there on the creek there called it the round hole, and we usually go swimming down there about every day. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I, I fixed up my dive board or I could dive off in the deepest part of it. And how deep would that be? Well, it would be over my head. There was one oh, place where it would go over deep. my head. Sure. Um, but it, was, it had to go very far. You could just walk right out, though. <laughs> so what other other water did the property have? Well, had uh, water well. Um, then I had to pump it and carry it in a bucket to the house. No indoor plumbing? No indoor plumbing, no. no. <laughs> no. Do you remember when that came? We got electricity in August of 1948. Oh. And that's when the, I guess put an electric pump in the well and pump water to the house. Oh, oh, before that, they did have a windmill. They had a force pump on a windmill and they had a tank in a building that was up overhead there, and it pumped water in that tank, and it would siphon into the house. And they did have it running water that way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and how did they heat the house? Oh, way back there, this with wood, I guess. And then they finally got propane or butane. But I started out butane, I think. They done away with butane and with, and with propane. Heat, heat the house. So winter's Cook. pretty cold. Yeah. Cold the winters. And oh, they had an old oil stove that you used to cook with. That had a place for, on the end there for the oil. And put the kerosene in it, and that you could light the burners off of that. And cook your chicken. <laughs> yeah. Huh? And cook your chicken. Yeah, cook the fried chicken. <laughs> Yeah. So on Sundays, what type of things did you do on Sunday? Was it? Did you have to work on Sunday too? Oh, uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> had to milk cows on Sunday. Yeah, had to feed the hogs and take care of the chickens and the cows on milk the cows on Sunday. And then your sister helped your mother cook? Yes, uh huh. Did. Yeah, I remember uh, well, my dad and mother and I would go on out and do the chores, and my sister would stay at the house and she'd get breakfast for us. She'd have breakfast ready then when we got done. <laughs> and what would breakfast be? Uh, bi biscuits and gravy and everything good like that. <laughs> yeah. They, they butchered hogs and would cure the meat and they'd have the bacon and soldiers and then the hams. How would they the, keep that cold? They put it hanging up down the cellar and, and it would last way up in the summer. In the summertime, they could have that, that ham. Hmm. It would keep by putting it in salt, you know, salting it down. Okay. Smoke salt. Sure.
Did they have a smokehouse? Yeah, and they kept it that way some too in the smokehouse, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my dad, he was pretty good about curing that meat. Shoulders and hams and all that. And when tracers would come in the summertime, they'd serve that ham and all of them. They'd, they'd just go wild over that white. They'd get <laughs> the ham. <laughs> sure. They they part of the, the thrashing ring? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, they, they, they'd probably be, be, be a dozen men. Eat at the table. I have to have two tables to feed everybody. <laughs> maybe, maybe there'd be 15 of them. Be quite a tracing crew, you know. But the neighbors all go in together and swap work with one another, and the drivers they just move around different places. Did you have to do some of that yourself? Yeah, uh, I hauled bundles with, with the horses. They'd pitch the bundles up on the wagon, and I'd stack them on the wagon, and get it, get the way up to the top it out and then I'd go to the thrive machine and drive up one side of the thrive machine and pitch them in the thrive machine. Uh -huh. A hard day's work. Yeah. And then when did they get the first uh, tractor? <clears throat> 1935. Well, Dad bought an old fortune tractor. And During the Depression? Yeah. It was an old used tractor, bought it up north of Pawnee. But and then I, we got by with it until 1938, we bought a new John Deere tractor. $1,000, I think, $1,050, something like that for a new John Deere tractor. And that was a lot then, though, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? I think so. They probably, he probably traded in that old fortune tractor and a team of horses and gave so much money to boot. <laughs> <laughs> and how long did he keep that one? Uh, I, I guess he had it all during the war. And when I came home from the Army in 40 and 45, I guess he still had it. And then wasn't long after that we, I bought, we bought a different tractor, another John Deere. Well, they're supposed to run forever, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and now I had through the years I had a lot of several John Deere tractors. Got two on the place now. One of us went down the road all ago. We saw that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yellow and green. Uh, uh, that's the latest ones. <laughs> yeah, you got one with a cab on it with air conditioning. The other one is not don't have air. Yeah, I had had a n number of different John Deere tractors. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them all, trade them off, and get a different one. Or where would you have to go to get one new one? Oh, uh, Pawnee. Pawnee, okay. Uh, John Deere dealer, Pawnee. Mm -hmm. Oh, Cecil Kelly was a John Deere mailer. Well, we've done a lot of business with him. Get a pretty good trade in on a used one? Yeah. So you graduated from high school in? No, I, I didn't. I quit school when I was in eleventh grade. Got close. <laughs> yeah, I went. I went to put near Christmas time, I think. Then I took out. Didn't go back. In eleven, I about killed my mother. She just hated it so bad. She tried her best to get me to go on. Well, what did you do when you stopped? Oh, I just helped Dad farm. Did you? Yeah. Just got tired well, we of going. We went together in the farming business. And, yeah. and then you went in the military? Yeah, and then I was drafted. I wasn't a went, but they drafted me. <laughs> I had to go. <laughs> yeah. And then when I come back, well, I, they still had some cattle and the John Deere tractor and the machinery and the land. And so I was 
just went to farming together. And stayed put. Stayed put, yeah. yeah. I've done awful well. I've yeah. done awful well. Mm -hmm. I've made a little money and have saved up quite a bit. <laughs> the land's been good to you then, Yeah. Huh? Do you have any idea why they chose this particular piece of land, your grandfather? I don't know. I never did hear them say it, why they chose it. Uh, it had the stream going through it? Yeah. That may be why. I've been one of them, yeah. Over the years, did you have to do any conservation efforts? Oh, yeah, with terrace. You know, build terrace, terraces and waterways and all that, yeah. Build any ponds? And had had a number of ponds built, yeah. Are, yeah. are they still around? Yeah, I'll say it. We got three over there on the home place, and about three on this side of the road, about six ponds. Well, that's pretty good then. <laughs> yeah. And then the creek. Yeah, and the creek. And the creek. Oh, the creek has been been a kind of a death road to us, and the, we have cattle that gets down in there and they get drowned and they. And maybe they'll have a little calves along on the creek bank and it gets over in there and gets drowned. So the old creek has cost us some money in different ways to have been to us, good to us that way. Have put a fence around it. Yeah. Well, when the WPA came through, did they do anything with it? The WPA? No. The Roosevelt years? No, we didn't. Dad didn't sign up to have anything that kind of work done. They built one for the neighbor up north here. The WPA built that pond. And did your sister live in the area, or did she move away? When she got first got married, they lived four uh, four miles west of Yale. Down there by them twin mound. Mm -hmm. They lived there about four years and, and then they bought a place up four, four miles east of Glencoe and four miles west of Lone Chimney Corner. And lived there. And they had, had that for them until they died. So she didn't, she didn't mind that you kept this one? No. No. Um, I, I, and after the folks died, why well, I bought her and her out. I, I bought her a share of it out. Well, about about when did you have telephone service out here? Not probably not really good. The last the war was over about about forty. 45, maybe, 46. Elk Crank. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, before that, there's way back there when I was a kid, the folks had a phone that had crank on it, mm -hmm. hoop and holler on it, you know. <laughs> Wasn't very good service. <laughs> oh, I, I remember the, the neighbors used to call one of them and they had so many rings. And the neighbor up here, may, to get his phone, he had to ring maybe a, two long short, two longs and then one short, or something like that. <laughs> three, three longs and three shorts. Kind of like Morse code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you had, you had to, that was her number. Either longs or shorts. <laughs> I forget the folks how many numbers they had. It's been so long. Did you have any pets when you were growing up? Pets. Pets. Mm -hmm. Cattle dogs or. Oh yeah, I went to a lot of dogs in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
at any at any point did you have to supplement the income from the farm with a, a second job or anything? Um, no, no. no. Uh, Dad never was much of a hand to work out. He just stayed this what to do on the farm. Oh, we, we uh, do customer work. Done a lot of that, combining and okay. hay bailing sure. for other people. We've done plenty of that. Well, did your mother quilt? Oh yeah, yeah. Did she? One club, and they had quilts and clubs and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. She she made a lot of quilts. <clears throat> then when we settled up to state, my sister took most all the quilts. I didn't get very many of them. <laughs> I, I've got two or three of them around here, and they're getting a little bit ragged. torn and ragged now. <laughs> did she enter them in the county fair? No, I don't think she ever did do that. I don't know. Uh, she might have entered some some fruit, maybe, or vegetables that she can, maybe. Jams. Yeah. I guess I'm just assuming they had a county fair. Yeah, way back there when I was a kid, they had a fair at Merrimack. I know my dad, he would take watermelons up there. And he, I think we won pretty good on watermelons. <laughs> then then I, that was to go to Pawnee. I have taken stuff to Pawnee. I have taken watermelons. And, and I I taken some stuff one year to Tulsa Fair, like sweet potatoes and orange potatoes. Win any prizes? And win prizes. Mm -hmm. you know, win something, six or seven maybe. Right? <laughs> hey. That's good, though. Yeah. Well, then, then I was in FFA, and I was in the judging contest. I won first in judging, judging livestock at okay. the Tulsa Fair. <laughs> I didn't have much competition, though. <laughs> uh, judging cattle? Yeah. Cattle. Judging, judging cattle. It was livestock. Well, how would how would you get from here to Tulsa? Well, <clears throat> the teacher that both decorated teacher he had a car. He, he would haul us. What it on on Sundays? Did you go to church? My folks were pretty pretty good about going to church, but I didn't go much. I did someone I was younger. And then when did you get married? I even get married in 1940 or 1957. I was about 40 years old. Well, that just took you a while to find the right one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she had two, two children. I went and didn't have no more others. One of them lives up in this house right up here now. So they moved. So they moved to the farm with you. Well, he did. He just come out here in the last ten years. Before that, he lived in Tulsa, and he was an electrician. And his wife—that's where he met her. She's an electrician too. Well, they made awful good money and saved up a lot of money, and enough that they could build that two hundred thousand dollar home up there. It's pretty. <laughs> So the land is in his name now? Uh, I just did it to him. Did it. Did it to him. And he didn't pay me nothing. <laughs> well, what will happen to it in the next 100 years? What will? Uh, Does he have children? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he has a daughter. And she has two children. And then she has... His wife has a daughter and a son, and uh, her wife's daughter, she had twins the other day.
little boy and little girl over in Tulsa. <laughs> so there'll be plenty to keep it. They, they, were, they, they were kind of born premature, but several weeks before time. And then the well, little, little girl had to have heart surgery the other day, but come out of it okay. Good. So far, making it all right. So they, they, they weighed two pounds a piece. <laughs> just, ooh, this little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, I was talking to them this morning. Said both of them, they've been gaining a little weight. Technology's great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're feeding them with a tube in their mouth. Put a tube in their mouth, I guess, that's what, to get their nourishment. Right. I read somewhere where you've had a lot of twin calves on this farm. Oh, yeah. Since probably I got home from the Army in 40, 45, we probably had about a dozen, or no, 15 probably, 15 cents of cash. Is that unusual? Well, we had to set this, this year. That seems like a lot. Yeah, 15 cents or probably now 16. I had a picture of all of them and I gave them to Mary to keep. Now she's Claim she give them back to him and well, if she give them back to me, I can't find them anywhere. So I think she got them up there and she just misplaced them. Sure. Or else she threw them in the trash, and I hope she had not. I tried all my best to keep them together all these years. Yeah. yeah. I got I got a picture book there with some of them twin kids. Same ones right over there on that stand. That just seems like that's unusual for one farm to have that many, isn't it? Well, I guess so. We raised a lot of alfalfa hay and fit them good, and I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have twin kids. That was my mother and dad. Get old overalls. Yeah. And then that's my wife, Frida, and that's my sister, Ruby. And that's her son, Rex. And that's his wife. And that's my mother, David. That's, that's, that's Rex's son. And dad. And Cyril. There's a John Deere tractor. That's a big one. Yeah, that's it. Got a two pack. Here's some twin cats. Yeah. It looks like the same cow, but they're different. Yeah, yeah. their markings are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how many cows would you have at one time? Oh, way back there. After my folks died, I had both on both sides of the road here. I had a, around 150 to 190 head of cattle, calves and all. A lot to keep up with. <laughs> yeah. I probably had 50 cows, maybe. And when it was time to take them to market, how would you take them? Yeah. I, had a truck with sideboards on it and hauled them in a truck for a long time. And before that, we usually hired somebody that had a truck hauled. And 
And we had a trailer that we hauled our hogs in, but we didn't try to haul the cattle in yet. And where would you take them? Tulsa. Tulsa. Sand Springs. And, and then they'd get on a train and go to a stockyard or? Yeah. Yeah, they would, would it, it would go back to the country if anybody wanted them as feeders or if they if they were. Was butchered, they were packing little packing plants all around Tulsa, on Sand Springs. They would buy, buy them for the butcher. Well, it is. Here's the old tractor that had, had, had during the war. That was the first one we bought. And it looks like they're threshing there too, then? I think they're bailing hay. Bailing hay. That's a picture of the old house. Yeah, this is. Yeah, that's my grandfather. And that's my mother's sister. That's her brother right there. This, this is her mother. And I guess that's my mother. My mother, yeah. I think Aunt Grace is eight years older and I think he was about 20, 20 or 21 years older than my mother. <laughs> and that was maybe There were some other children born in between there but they they died they, back then they couldn't save them like they could now. Like they do now. Yeah. It's a good looking family. <laughs> oh they should have been another I guess there's another one that was five years younger than my mother, but I guess she was, hadn't been born yet. Aunt Frances. She wasn't in the picture. Did they come to visit on the farm? Who? Who? Your aunt. Did your aunts come to visit yeah. on the farm? They, they lived up Pawnee. Oh, well, they didn't have to come too far then. <laughs> My grandmother had property in Merrimack after he died. He died when I was four days old. I was born on the 15th and he died the 19th of December. Mm. He was only 63, 63 years old. And then my mother, my grandmother, she she bought property there in Merrimack then in, in a few years and lived up here and she died then at 29 at Merrimack. She was 72 years old. Well, And are they buried in Merrimack, or are they? Yeah, at Merrimack, Merrimack Cemetery. We passed one coming, but mm -hmm. ten types. Well, there's me and my pet pig. Or that have a pet pig. <laughs> it's just a little thing. Yeah. So if he was your pet, you didn't take him <laughs> to that would, the runt. To, the old sow wasn't feeding it too good, and I'd take it and raise it myself. But usually it wind up that something happened to it, so I never could get it to grow clear out. Want <laughs> <laughs> oh, to see that other one? It was newer. Oh, and that, yeah, that's some steps on there. This is taken down to Fort Sill, that, that reservation out there from Fort Sill. Mm -hmm. That's him and his wife there. Have you met her? No. 
she works for the railroad she tells them she's on on the job now she go to work at at 2 30 gets off at 10 30. Huh. Um, 2.30 in the morning or 2.30 in the afternoon? Afternoon, yeah. Afternoon. Mm -hmm. Well, she maybe it'll work that way for a while until she gets bumped. They bump one another in there and get it. And they have to get a different job. To give it. But still be the railroad, the same kind of work, but they have different hours. Huh. <laughs> but get bumped on, on that. She got bumped here not long ago. Well, this the, did the railroad used to come through here? Yeah. They're right How close? back in my place here. It did? Uh -huh. hmm. mm -hmm. What line do you know? Santa Fe. Santa Fe? Mm -hmm. Are the, is the track still there? No, they've taken it up and removed it. Just the bed? Yeah, just, just the old bed and let it grow up to cedar trees. So when you were younger, it was going back and forth? Yeah. Did you ever hop on it? No, no, I never did. Never did hop on it. No hobos hopped off? Mm. No. I think the folks maybe did have a little trouble with people, men that come and be kind of hobos. Not so much, so. Probably just in the 30s when... Times were yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a pretty new tractor. Yeah. Yeah, that that's that's the latest one. That's the one without the cab. That was pretty new then. Yeah, I see yeah. you're tr you're trying it out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was at the dealer's place. Um, that's for trying it out. That's right. Yeah, that's the guy that sold it to us. So today the farm is still still raising cattle and hay. Yeah. And you're supervising. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read somewhere that uh, back in the twenties or so that Yale even had a hospital. Yes. Right. It, it was still probably in operation when the war was over with, but I don't think it was lasted long after that. So if you got sick, the doctor just came to you when you were here, younger? I remember I had to have appendicitis operation. Um, my mother called a doctor and he came from Pawnee out here. And as soon as the doctor seen me and checked me, he said, you're going to Pawnee. And so I, he, t he t loaded me up in his car and my mother too. And we rode him up Pawnee and he had this operator on him just right away. My appendix had already bursted. <laughs> I had to get it out there to call it gangrene. Sure. <laughs> but the doctor made a home visit. Yeah. That doesn't happen much anymore. No. So is the old house still standing? Yeah. The one built the one that was built in nineteen oh nine. Yeah, they built on to it. Or, you know. The old north north side is the old old part and then they built on the, the west and on the south. Somebody and lived made it, it made it larger, you know. Did they live in it? Yeah. And then the paperwork they said there was a wash house. What what was a wash house? Well, you did laundry or? Yeah. Or Mother had the old Maytag washing machine out there. Okay. Um, a ringer. Wash, wash the clothes in that old Maytag washing machine. You had to crank it with your foot, you know, and get it started and wash the clothes. Huh. <laughs> Hadn't seen one of those. And it's still standing. Yeah, that works out. Yeah. So at one time, was all 80 acres fenced in? 
and uh, yeah, my dad just farmed 80 acres and uh, 40 on the west of it. Uh, that's all he had there. And then Uncle John had this at North Indian and he sold out him and his wife went to Colorado and he rented it out to a neighbor up north and, and he farmed it for a while. So dad, Ned wasn't there was a very big farmer. <laughs> Didn't spread out, try to do too much. Sure. And then neighbors help neighbors. Yeah. That's what the old house looked like when he first built it. It had two rooms downstairs and one upstairs. Bedroom was upstairs. And that's Ruby, my sister. Okay. Now, I, was, I wasn't born yet. So that must have been taken at about 13 or, or 14. It had three doors? Uh, or at least two? Yeah, maybe they did. Maybe they did have two doors. That's a neat, neat picture. And then there's the rest of it down there, what it looked like today. Is it? So this is still there. Not too many windows. No. Did the snow blow in on you from the roof? Do you remember? No, I don't remember that, no. Must have been a pretty good roof then. <laughs> yeah. That's the arrow. Arrow picture of it. Okay, the pond in the pond. Mm -hmm. I don't know unless that may be well this looks like a house here it looks like right there that's yeah, the, the yeah. top part I guess that's it mm -hmm. looks like they may have added a window or two on the second floor mm -hmm. yeah so where on, on here where are we today over here yes uh -huh. on this side so so how has farming changed besides equipment? Well, well you used to raise alfalfa and corn for the hogs. Now then it's just hay and cattle. Just, um, we, we don't try to harvest anything, only just the hay, bale hay, round bale it, and square, square, still square bale some of it. And Mostly to feed the cattle then, that you have. And if we have any extra hay, we sell it, and the rest of it we just feed to the cattle and the calves. Then they have to buy feed uh, pellets supplement feed, a propane, a propane feed, feed that in the wintertime, I'd go to town at, at the elevator and buy that. And manage or we used to have the alfalfa, we didn't need, didn't have to go to town and buy that propane, protein feed, because alfalfa had a lot of protein in it. Hmm. it didn't need need any other one of these feet and that alfalfa boy it was it, it the only cows would get fat on it. You, if they eat too much and get people to too much of it. But you just don't grow it now? I had to quit on account of them old weevil. The old weevil come in the country and they you you got to spray it now or you won't grow it. Mm -hmm. They'll eat it up if you don't spray it. So so much trouble to spray it you just quit growing it. A lot of them are still are growing it though up on the river in Arkansas and Black Bear on that good land, mm -hmm. and they're, they're still growing it, but they have to spray it. You know. Crop dust it. Yeah. Crop dust. Mm -hmm. So you're pretty much able to make ends meet with what you do. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty pleasant to raise alfalfa back there then before that old weevil came. It was, it was a nice crop to raise. Yeah, you could always sell it too, and it made, made good money of selling it. Well, I've about asked all of my questions. Is there something else you might want to add? Would you do it again? Uh, <laughs> you chuckle. Uh, oh, I'd live my life a little different, I guess. <laughs> oh, but you'd still stay on the land? I'd still stay on the land, yeah. Sure. I like that part of it. Yeah. The land's been good to you. Yeah. Yeah. The oil, oil companies have been pretty good about leasing the land, getting some lease money. What oil they all had on them. Did they find any, any oil? There's one oil well down there yet that's been producing since 82. On your property? Yeah. That's lucky too, isn't it? Yeah, I even have gas off of the oil well, heat my house, and don't have to buy no propane. Well, that's even better. <laughs> yeah, I went all winter, and I haven't had to switch it. I've got it fixed where I can switch it to propane if I if they have trouble with the well. Mm -hmm. But so far this winter, I haven't had to make switches. I had my tank propane tank filled up and I haven't burned up any of it. Oh, just, if it hadn't leaked off, well, I still got it all. <laughs> we didn't have, a winter wasn't too bad this year either, no, though. No, no. Well, then that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you talking to us today. Well, I hope I've made a mess of it. <laughs> no, you've done, you've done fine. You've done fine.